We now move on to the study of two dimensional flows and we start the study with linear systems. So this lecture will center around definitions and some examples. In one dimensional phase spaces, the trajectories move monotonically or they remain constant. We now study linear systems in two dimensions. A two-dimensional linear system is a system of the form x dot is equal to ax plus by and y dot is equal to cx plus dy where a, b, c, d are all parameters. We will use green to actually denote vectors and this system can be written as x dot is equal to ax where a is a b c d and x is composed of x and y. Now such a system is linear in the sense that if x1 and x2 are solutions then any linear combination c1 x1 plus c2 x2 is also a solution. Note that x star is equal to 0 is always a fixed point for any choice of capital A. So solutions of x dot is equal to ax can in fact be visualized as trajectories moving on the xy plane which is called the phase plane. Let's consider an example. Let's consider the vibrations of a mass hanging from a linear spring. This is governed by a linear differential equation mx double dot plus kx is equal to 0 where m is the mass k is the spring constant and x is the displacement of the mass from equilibrium. Now we construct a simple diagram to show this. So we have a spring at the bottom of a spring there is a mass m and x is the displacement of the mass from equilibrium. Our objective is to give a phase plane analysis of this simple harmonic oscillator. In fact, the objective is to understand the behavior of the linear equation without actually solving it. To find the vector field, note that the state of the system is characterized by its current position x and the velocity v. So writing in terms of x and v we get x dot is equal to v this is just from the definition of a velocity and v dot is equal to minus k on m x then the equation is written in terms of v. 
To simplify notation, we let omega squared equal to k on m and we get x dot is equal to v and v dot is equal to minus omega squared x. The above system assigns a vector x dot v dot to v minus omega squared x at each point xv and so represents a vector field on the phase plane. Now let's look closer at the vector field. When we are on the x-axis then v is equal to 0 and so x dot v dot is equal to 0 minus omega squared x. So vectors point downwards for positive x and vertically upwards for negative x. When x gets larger in magnitude, the vectors 0 minus omega squared x get longer. And similarly, on the v-axis, the vector field is x dot v dot is equal to v0. And this points to the right when v is greater than 0 and points to the left when v is less than 0. So let's go ahead and actually plot this information. So we have a plot of v versus x. Note that x dot v dot is equal to 0, 0 when x v is equal to 0, 0. And so the origin is a fixed point. However, a phase point starting anywhere else would actually circulate around the origin and eventually return to its starting point. So such trajectories form closed orbits. So let's plot the phase portrait of the system. That's a plot of V versus X. So we have one closed orbit. And that's another closed orbit. And so on. The orbits are actually ellipses given by the equation omega squared x squared plus v squared is equal to c where c greater than or equal to 0 is a constant. Now we have fixed points and closed orbits. So the question is what do these have to do with the original problem? Or how do they actually relate to the problem of a mass on a spring? The fixed point xv is equal to 0, 0 corresponds to static equilibrium of the system. The mass is at rest at its equilibrium position and will stay there forever. The closed orbits correspond to periodic motion. Let's try and visualize the dynamics. Here the velocity is zero, so the spring is most compressed. By the time the mass 
has reached x is equal to 0, it has a large positive velocity and so it overshoots x is equal to 0. The mass now comes to rest at the other end where v is 0 again. Then the mass gets pulled up again and completes the cycle. Now let's plot v versus x. We have the four different positions A, B, C and D. And we get a closed orbit. So this provides a phase plane analysis of the simple harmonic oscillator. We consider another example Solve the linear system x dot is equal to ax, where a is a0, 0, 0, minus 1, and graph the phase portraits as a varies from minus infinity to plus infinity, showing the qualitatively different cases. Note that we use green to denote vectors. The system is x dot y dot is equal to a 0 0 minus 1 times x y which gives x dot is equal to a x and y dot is equal to minus y. Note that the two equations are not coupled. In this case each equation can actually be solved separately. The solution is x of t is equal to x naught e to the at and y sub t is equal to y naught e to the minus t. So when a is less than 0, x of t decays exponentially and so all trajectories approach the origin as t tends to infinity. But the direction of the approach depends on the size of a compared to minus 1. So we consider numerous cases and begin with a less than minus 1. and then plot A is equal to minus 1. Then consider A less than 0 and greater than minus 1. We consider the case A is equal to 0. And finally, the case A is greater than 0. In each case, y sub t actually decays exponentially. When A is less than minus 1, x of t decays more rapidly than y of t. Recall that x of t is x naught e to the at and y of t is y naught e to the minus t. The fixed point x star is equal to 0 is called a stable node. 
when a is equal to minus 1 y sub t divided by x of t is equal to y naught divided by x naught is equal to a constant and so all the trajectories are straight lines through the origin. In this case x star is called a symmetrical node or a star. When a is less than 0 and greater than minus 1, we again have a stable node. In the case of a is equal to 0, we have x of t is equal to x naught and we get an entire line of fixed points. All trajectories approach these fixed points along vertical lines. And when A is greater than 0, X star becomes unstable and most trajectories move away from x star except if the trajectory starts on the y-axis. In this case x star is equal to 0 is called a saddle point y-axis is the stable manifold of the saddle point x star which is a set of initial conditions x naught such that x of t tends to x star as t tends to infinity. The unstable manifold of x star is the set of initial conditions such that x of t tends to x star as t tends to minus infinity. So the x-axis is the unstable manifold. Now in this lecture we started with two-dimensional flows and in particular our initial focus is going to be on linear systems. So in one-dimensional flows we are dealing with equations of the form x dot is equal to f of x where f could be nonlinear. But when we are starting with linear systems with two-dimensional flows we are dealing with equations of the form x dot is equal to ax plus by and y dot is equal to cx plus dy, where a, b, c and d are parameters. To motivate an example, you could actually look at the vibrations of a mass hanging from a linear spring, and that's an example of a linear two-dimensional system. Now in that particular system, what we found is we could either have a fixed point or we could have closed orbits that represented periodic motion. So a thing that immediately comes up uh, when you're going from one dimensional flows to two dimensional flows and in particular even with uh, linear systems we find that we can have periodic motion that comes up very naturally in two dimensional systems.